In this video, we're going to talk about character design, shape language, and brushes. But on a more important note, have you ever heard of animals asking, asking for a friend? For a friend. I am now a frog. I will be answering no questions. This is who I am. I must say, I'm not sure if my voice fits this model very well, but seeing as I made it from scratch, we're going to commit to it for at least this one video. Welcome to my frog era. Let's get started. How did I go from this to this without much of a plan. Now, disclaimer, I find that there's two different types of artists, or at least two different ways of approaching art. Let's use this painting that I did a while back as an example. Instead of planning everything out with line work, I went straight into trying to figure out the silhouette and blocking those shapes in. For me, I find this a lot easier to tackle complex ideas that I might have. In the very first pass, I try to keep the shape simple and just focus on the major compositional elements. Once I think I'm happy, I'll then start painting into those shapes and detailing them out more and more as I go. In a one character illustration, it's pretty straightforward, but in something like this 12 character spread, I might have to break this up a bit and tackle each character individually. When using this method, I try to just focus on the local colors when creating my shapes. Once I'm around this stage of, say, a character design, this is when I can start thinking about a lighting test. Even if you plan on waiting till the very end to do your final lighting pass, having a plan here at an early stage I think is really important, as the lighting is also a compositional element and changes the way your eye moves around a piece. I'm using the lasso tool to indicate where the light is interacting with the character, trying to keep this as simple as possible, only focusing on the largest surfaces. I'm trying to think about this as a three-dimensional object. Which direction is our light source coming from? As it's rather easy to change things at this stage. For me, drawing never came naturally. It's not the way I approach art. Just look at how simple my donut fish character started out. So if you struggle to compose images with line work, I would say try this method. It really clicked for me. It's definitely a more painterly approach to art making, but can be a game changer for those it clicks with. I think art education is so focused on drawing and line work that oftentimes you can be an artist for a long time and not really realize that your process could be much more optimized for your personal way of comprehending images. Being able to compose full compositions started to become far more easier. I started to understand how light wrapped around objects. The realization of this alone was a massive level up for me. So if you feel like that your art education kind of has hit a wall, try to think about the image that you're trying to create by their shapes instead of their lines. So I'm going to use a single brush for this entire illustration. It's a rectangle. It's also a default brush in the painting section on Procreate. You can find it right here. I use this brush for 95% of everything I do. And honestly, this brush could be anything that's pretty simple, as long as you have used it enough to become comfortable with it. I personally like the rectangle because you can get some really hard edges, but you can make it really big and do sweeping motions, but you can also make it small and get some decent lines out of it as well. So that is why I think this is the one brush to rule them all. For this piece, I didn't have a super clear idea of what the end result was gonna look like. However, my goal was an assortment of characters that were demon-esque in nature, in a parade-like fashion or march, being led by my flag girl character that I have featured in previous works, as I'll show on screen. One of the first creature concepts I wanted for this piece was this floating bewitched frog. I didn't really know what it was going to look like, but I wanted it to be big and kind of grotesque. You can see me putting the early stages of that together here. However, I struggled with the palette on this one for a bit, as in my head, frog equal green, but that didn't really mesh with the red devilish palette that I was hoping to go for for this piece. So I ended up settling on this creamy milk color, as I thought it was kind of a neutral and would mesh with any palette and still be in line with what could be realistic. For the next edition, I was a little lazy. I pulled the layers from my original flag girl piece as I liked this character in the back. 
especially the shape language of their mask with these horns, so I thought I would upgrade them with a lizard mount. In the end, I think I ended up painting over the whole thing anyways, but it was a good starting point. And then the lazy streak continued as I pulled some textures off of another lizard painting I did earlier this year. So this character is essentially a composite of other paintings that I have done. But despite that, I love reusing assets, especially in the composing phase of something, before I commit to hours of rendering. And then naturally, I had to add some lanterns with evil spirits trapped inside. I would like to think that their masks reflect their personality. I ended up deciding that I wanted to add some abandoned character designs I had done in the past and didn't end up using for anything. So my apologies, I don't have the full sketch phase for this character as I had done it about a year prior to this. But I did kind of like his shape language and thought that I could repurpose him for the purposes of this illustration. My concept for him was that he was this old fisherman knight and I wanted to keep elements of that. I decided to shift his palette to something a bit more red and spooky from what it originally was to match the purposes of this illustration better. I originally had sketched him out with this aquatic tank on his back, you know, to hold whatever old men be fishing for, but I thought I would shift this over to our bewitched frog as I thought it would match the swamp aesthetic a little bit more over there. And then as a trade, I thought I'd let him carry this big boy. And at this point, I think I've come up with the majority of the larger character designs I wanted for this piece, as some of them are really complicated. And at this point, I'm a little concerned that this piece is going to be too busy. So around now, I've started to think about how to fill out the rest of the space with less complicated characters and smaller objects to kind of change up the weight and shape language through the composition. So I'm being very meaningful with my placement especially with the lanterns, as they have a lot of saturation, as a guideline on how your eye should move through the piece. And yes, I did add an ore fish to the background of this composition, also known as the earthquake fish, as one of these bad boys recently washed up on the California coast. And then we ended up having a series of small earthquakes at the time of this recording. Fun times. So I did lie a little bit. I did end up using another brush for a very small section of this artwork. Me and the other five Drawtober hosts decided to make custom sticker sheets. And as a lot of them are pencil artists, I decided to try to match their style a little bit just so everything kind of melded together a bit better. This one's also in the default section on Procreate. It's in the calligraphy section. It's called Chalk. I like this one because you can get really nice textured fine lines with it, but my preference is to supersize it and build up the textures with layering. And I think this gives a really nice gradient, especially with multi-tone. For a side piece, it does pretty good work. I mentioned this because I ended up liking some of the assets on the sticker sheet and pulled them over for this illustration. Laziness wins again. And I'm still figuring out the best way to record my paint overs. At this point, the quality was pretty garbage, but I promise it gets better after this. I start doing screen recordings for the majority of it. So just hold tight. I'll super speed this section as it looks like doo doo. I think this was around the point where I felt pretty confident that I wasn't going to change the composition or the creatures within it too much. You'll start seeing me go in and actually detail some things out at this point. For these lantern characters, I gave them these mechanized wooden arms as I thought they could be a cool way to give some more expression. And I also like the idea of this one guy trying to hold his smile with his arms as if he's faking it for the audience. And I'm still just using that one rectangle brush. Up close, the textures can look a little crude, but this way I'm thinking of the entire picture as a whole, instead of focusing on small pixels to render out for hours and hours, as I've definitely been guilty of that in the past, and I'm trying to step back more and see the illustration as a whole. Focusing on its conceptual or storytelling elements instead of judging the merits of a piece of artwork just based on its level of render. As I do think AI has kind of devalued rendering in a sense, at least currently. So I personally am trying to find other ways to bring more value into my art that can't necessarily just be prompted by some AI bro in their mother's basement. I also decided to add my lantern yokai character that I painted a couple years ago into the top center area. 
I thought her design would go well thematically with the rest of the piece and justify all the lanterns, which I love painting. A element that I think is crucial to pulling this piece together is getting the smoke correct, as it's the one thing that kind of grounds all these characters as painting a bunch of figures on a floating black background can kind of remove them from reality. So even the slightest hints of an environment can go a long way. Can you count how many frogs I've added to this piece? Can you count how many fish I've added to this piece? The main reason I've added these elements is to play with scale, also to have some things that are less complex through the image. That way your eye will have somewhere to rest instead of getting overloaded when you look at the illustration as a whole, at least theoretically. This is also why I ended up going with a much more simple outfit than the rest of the characters for these witch characters. I originally was going to stick to that more reddish palette for them, but after making the bewitched frog kind of this creamy color, I wanted something that played off that and kind of brought that more pale color throughout the palette. And now onto my very favorite part of this painting, was actually this glove. I really love detailing out armor, cause like you can do anything. And as long as it's got a slight metal effect to it, no one's gonna question it. I would love to have a job just designing fantasy armor. Now, planning out a piece with 12 characters in it might seem daunting, but if you don't pre-plan anything, it's not so bad. Granted, you'll constantly be fixing things the whole time and it will take you hours longer because you didn't plan anything out, but how are you gonna have performance anxiety if you don't even know what you're going to make? Take that stupid brain. I would describe this as one of my more unplanned pieces. I just had some shape language and theme that I wanted to go for. So you can see that I'm really just kind of figuring out the details as I go along. And that's why you'll see I go back and forth a lot and change a lot of things and end up changing the way characters might look. And you'll see even I'll change the posing of a lot of stuff quite often. And when I'm sticking with this like kind of loose style and just focusing on shape language and not focusing on details until I really have a solid idea that I want something in the place that it's gonna be, I don't really go into a lot of rendering right away. For my process here where I don't have a client or have any like solid goal in mind, I find this to be a very relaxing way to work as I really enjoy developing the concept of things as I go. It's kind of fun not knowing what the end result's going to produce. Controversial take incoming. You can have too many layers. You wouldn't not clean your room, right? Merge down, bro. I try to keep my layers to a minimum. Each character will have two to three layers maximum, but Oftentimes, especially when I'm working in Procreate that has limitations, it will be like foreground, midground, and background. So anything that are in those ranges that aren't touching, oftentimes I will compress into the same layer. With a piece like this with so much complexity that gets a little bit more difficult, but I learned how to paint as an oil painter, so I've been kind of used to not having very many layers. And this is another reason that I stress having your composition kind of figured out in the early stages so heavily. But I find that I end up having decision fatigue if I keep too many layers, and this way things stay nice and tidy. Obviously, do what you feel most comfortable with, but I've noticed that I will make decisions faster if I minimize my layers to what is absolutely necessary. Maybe my brain is broken that way, but it definitely was a factor in speeding up my process. I think once you gain those skills where you're comfortable rendering things out, the majority of your time is gonna be spent planning the piece out. So if you can optimize the way you start pieces, that can heavily decrease the time it takes for you to start and complete a piece of art, which can be really important, especially if you want to work as an artist professionally. Deadline lines and stuff. I remember when I first started out, I put all my attention to increasing my skills in like rendering out a piece and making sure something looked finished or polished. Is everything going to look perfect? And you know, I would spend two, three months on a piece and yeah, it would look pretty good in the end, but it just wasn't realistic to do that all the time. Also, my work wasn't that interesting at that time either. It might've been rendered nicely, but conceptually 
pretty boring stuff. And by the time I was like a couple weeks into a piece, I was kind of sick of it. Obviously, it's going to take time to gain those skills on the front end, but once you get there, kind of figuring out how to optimize things and speed up, which will make you much more valuable to say studios and such, if that's your goal. Obviously, there's no wrong way to do things. Whatever process works for you, go for it. But this is what has worked for me. Controversial take number two. If you're new to art, stop downloading brushes. That shit too fancy for you. You need to learn the fundamentals first. If you can't use a square brush or a circle brush, that stamp cloud isn't going to solve all your issues. Now, fancy brush sets can be very valuable in the right hands when people know how to use them. But as somebody starting out and learning art, I think these can be really detrimental to your art education as you will inevitably use them as a crutch. And you're not gonna find the perfect brush for every aspect of your piece and then consistency will not be a thing. So I would say get comfortable with the default brushes at least at first. Whoa, style shift, bro. So Sang thought my frog wasn't cute enough, so she redid my whole model. So now I look like this. Anywho, time to sell you some stuff, sort of. Copic approached me at Lightbox and gave me a bunch of free product. These are actually their new markers. It's the first time they've released stuff in a really long time. And although they're not sponsoring this video, they did give me a coupon code to give to you guys. It's 10% off. I'll show it on screen here, but I must say, these are the bomb. Although I'm not too much of a traditional artist these days, I use these to pretty much do all my signings. I really love the metallic ones. So the link is down in the description below for that. It is an affiliate link, so I do get a little bit of a payback for anything you guys buy, which will help support the channel, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and you get a discount on top of it. So if you want some Copics, make sure to use code INKWELL10 to get that discount. And on top of that, my personal shop will also be having 25% off for the Black Friday weekend. So I will have that link down below as well. I do one sale a year for my shop and also the same time that I update all my new inventory. So if you want any of those things, this is the cheapest they will be for the next year while supplies last. But anywho, here is the finished artwork. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think I wanna do more of these overcomplicated character spreads. There's definitely some areas that are far more rendered out than other ones, but I kind of like the idea of there being this detail fall off through the piece. It also pulls your eye to areas that I want you to look at more. So I'm gonna call this one done here. Although I know my process isn't necessarily for everybody, I hope this helped you in some way. If you want more videos like this, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And you can find the next video right here on screen.